Good day, <clears throat> and welcome to Lesson 12 in our study of the book of Daniel. Today we're going to try to finish chapter 7. Now this is a difficult part of Daniel. It's a difficult to know if the interpretation that has been given to it is correct, which interpretation is correct, if anybody really knows what it fully means. But this is what has been put forward as the interpretation of this part of chapter 7. If you go back and look at the first part of chapter 7 and even further back, you'll understand that Nebuchadnezzar had this vision of this great colossus, which was magnificent. It was full of gold, it was full of silver, brass, iron. But it still frightened Nebuchadnezzar so much that he called all his advisors together and asked them to interpret and to asked him what was his dream and to interpret his dream. It frightened Nebuchadnezzar, but Daniel was not really frightened or alarmed in telling him the interpretation. Now, this is Daniel's dream, has the same type of dream as reported in the first part of this chapter, of these beasts that come up, and these beasts that come up out of the sea, and the sea at, in this context really means the masses of people came up out of the sea, the masses of, the, of humanity, and there were four of them, which frightened Daniel cons considerably. It says that he, in, ver in, in uh, verse 14 says, I, Daniel, or verse 15 says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Because what he was seeing is the idea of from heaven what the, what the uh, empires of the world look like. To man, they are great majestic things, and the leaders of these empires felt that they were unparalleled in their beauty, in their splendor, in their power, in their prestige. But to God, they were just nothing more, but more than beasts. And this is why they're interpreted as beasts in this part of the vision. The beasts of the lion, and of the leopard, and of the bear, and of this massive fourth beast which had the power and the claws of iron. So it says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. So he came to one of the angels, in his, in his vision he came to one of the angels, and who told him the interpretation of what he had. He said, these beasts are four kings which arise out of the earth. This time he says, out of the earth rather than out of the sea. But it's out of the masses of people on the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So what he's saying is that God and his saints, God and, God and his son, God and his saints in the end times will inherit, will destroy the earthly kingdoms. And, and develop a kingdom which will never end. But Daniel wanted to know about the fourth beast, which was different than the other three. And this is, this is the interpretation, it says, because this had nails of bronze, teeth of iron, devoured, broken pieces, trampled the residue with its feet, and had ten horns on its, on its head, which the spirit said were ten kings, which came out of the fourth empire. Now, the fourth empire at that time encompassed all the known world. So whether it actually come out of the empire that we know today as the Roman Empire, or come out of the whole world, we don't really know. But it said that there were four, four, ten kings, and a third, another horn developed, another leader developed, which overtook three of the three kings. This is a part which is very difficult to understand, to interpret, because of the fact that this may not yet have happened. If it did happen in the past, it certainly is not really very clear as to how it happened. But this has been felt not to have yet occurred. So the fourth beast, he said, is a fourth kingdom on earth, which we feel is the Roman kingdom, is the Roman Empire, different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth. And at that time, Rome did really encompass all the known world, essentially. 
shall trample it, break it in pieces. And it did. It really crushed under its feet most of the known world at that time. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after him. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue the three kings. This is the part which is difficult to understand. We, <clears throat> we feel it's been felt that this, this new king, this new horn which develops, this new king which subdues the other is really the Antichrist, which he says he shall speak pompous words against the Most High. If you go to Revelation uh, 13 and 14, it says at the end about this beast that comes up, which does speak blasphemy. It says, the dragon who gave authority to the beast, they worshiped the beast, and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. So it is felt that this is the same beast that says here, he shall speak pompous words against the Most High and shall, cause, and shall blaspheme him. It's interesting how over the time how we get pompous words that come which speak against God and against God. Uh, the church against religion in general. There's an interesting piece in, Dr. in David Guzik's commentary which talks about the little horn and it talks about these pompous words and it says it may be like what was called the fascist creed of Italy during before the Second World War. So I want to read this creed to you. The creed is, I believe in Rome eternal the mother of my fatherland, and in Italy, her firstborn, who was born of her virgin womb by the grace of God, who suffered under the barbarian invader, was crucified, slain, and buried, who descended into the sepulchre and rose from the dead in the 19th century, who ascended to heaven in her glory in 1918-1922 by the march on Rome who was seated at the right hand of Mother Rome, who will come thence to judge the quick and the dead, I believe in the genius of Mussolini, in our Holy Father fascism, and in the communion of his martyrs, in the conversion of the Italians, and in the resurrection of the empire. Amen. This was the fascist creed in Italy before the Second World War. And this is what it means by speaking pompous words and speaking blasphemous words. So this is what this beast, this tenth horn, this king who subdues other kings, shall do. He shall subdue three kings, she shall speak pompous words against the Most High, and shall persecute the saints of the Most High. Now, saints are persecuted all over the world now, but that does not mean this is going to, this cannot get worse, as it probably will during this time. He shall intend to change times and the laws, and the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half a time, which really means three and a half years, the same time as reported in Revelation, one half of the tribulation period. But the court shall be seated, take away this dominion, and consume and destroy it forever. And the kingdom of kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. The kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him, God. The, this is simply saying that there are evil kingdoms on earth. There have been, and there will be, as long as man does not follow the precepts. In the instructions of God, there are going to be evil kingdoms, which to men on earth may appear great and mighty and have grandeur. But to God in heaven, they appear to be nothing more than beasts, devouring, ravaging, destroying, and annihilating others around them. 
And these beasts will come in more and greater power, and they will come in greater quantity. Where there were once four, there are now ten. But one king will come eventually. There will be one person who will just subdue other kings and become what we know as the Antichrist, who will want to become the world dominant leader. You can name all sorts of people who might fit that category, even today. But there will be one who will become the most dominant leader, who will try to subdue the rest of the people, who will try to overtake the rest of the world, who will speak blasphemies against God and against his people and against his kingdom, who will speak pompous words, blowing himself up and blowing his ideals up over those of God. This is really what this is saying, saying, but in the end, there's going to be a destruction of this kingdom, and the kingdom of God is going to end in victory. It will be given to the saints, it will be given to those who follow Christ, to those who follow God, and it will be given to the people, the saints of the Most High, this kingdom, the kingdom set up by God and by the saints and by the judge in heaven, the court in heaven which shall be seated, the kingdom which shall be set up by this court will have last forever. It is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominions, all nations, all peoples, all creeds, cultures will ultimately bow serve and obey him. Daniel said this is the end of, end of the account. This is the end of his vision. This is the end of what he saw. But his thoughts were troubled by all this. His thoughts were troubled by what he had seen, by what he had experienced in his visions, by what the angels had told him. As it would trouble anybody who saw this. And he said, some people say his countenance, he became white, he became white as a ghost, he became changed. It says that Moses, when he was on Mount Sinai and had contact with God, came down with an aura about him. He had become, his hair had become white, he had changed. Daniel says his countenance changed after this vision. But he didn't tell anyone about it, he kept it in his heart. He kept it to himself. But the idea of this vision is the fact that he saw what Nebuchadnezzar saw as grandeur and greatness. He says what God sees is nothing more than beastly and, ter and terrible. But there's a, he saw the vision in heaven of the Ancient of Days sitting and of the Son of Man who is actually Christ, sitting with him. And to Christ was given dominion and glory in a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. And this is the interpretation given by the angel to Daniel, that this greatly beastly kingdom goes from one through three and four, then into ten, but one will arise out of those ten, who will be the Antichrist, who will blaspheme speak pompously against God, try to overtake God, but in the end, the king and the court in heaven, the judge in heaven, will make sure that the dominion of this kingdom, in the end, that the dominion of the kingdom of the beast is destroyed, the kingdom of God will be given to the saints, and this will be a kingdom which will last forever and ever and ever. This greatly troubled Daniel and count, changed his countenance but he kept it to himself. So this is the first of the visions of Daniel that we see in this book. There are more. We're going into in chapter 8. In two weeks' time, there will be no Bible study next week over Christmas, but in two weeks' time we'll come back and start in chapter 8 and see what it says and what it has for us. So thanks again for watching. We hope to see you after Christmas. Have a good Christmas, have a happy new year, and we'll see you in early January. Thanks again for watching, and bye for now.